Hello, good morning. I am Mrs. Maria Cristina Maser, your Earth Science teacher for this quarter. Our next focus of discussion is all about typhoon formation. So we will begin with the discussion about um, where specifically um, typhoon forms, what are the conditions needed for a typhoon forms, what are some other factors affecting typhoon formation, and um, the classification, different classification of typhoons according to its um, wind speed. Okay? So to begin with, the layers of the atmosphere are not visible to the naked eye, such as I've discussed uh, on our first topic on this chapter all about atmosphere, these different layers, the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and then, your ter and then the thermosphere, is not really visible to our naked eye. The atmosphere is a protective layer of gases that acts like an envelope that shields every creature on Earth from harmful effects of sunlight, particularly the ultraviolet Radiation. So, to be specific, that layer of the atmosphere which protects us from this harmful ray is actually um, the ozone layer, which is actually located on the stratosphere. It also keeps uh, keeps Earth's temperature suitable for living things. So, we are not that cold and we are not that warm like Venus and um, Mercury, which is... Uh, really near to the sun, so which means uh, the temperature is enough to all living creatures uh, to live on this type of temperature. Among the five layers of the atmosphere, the troposphere, which is the lowest layer, is exposed to natural phenomena and ground activities because this is the closest layer to the ground. So the troposphere begins from the Earth's surface, which is this one, the ground, up to a height of 7 to 20 kilometers above sea level. So I've discussed what do we mean by this sea level. So that the sea level is considered as the 0 kilometers uh, from the ground towards the different layers of the atmosphere. It is made up of different gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and others. As the sunlight strikes the ground, the surface is warmed by the sun's radiation. The lowest portion of the troposphere is the warmest because, again, it is the one closest to the ground, so which means every day that the sun strikes the ground, specifically those which are heated up first, are good conductors of heat, um, such as rocks, solid materials, metals, heats up those gases uh, that are actually near to the ground. So to be specific, those gases at the troposphere level. The lowest portion of the troposphere is the warmest because it is near the ground which absorbs the sun's heat. The air on the ground is likewise heated and as it rises, it expands. This is actually a characteristic of gas. Gas, when it is being heated up, they expand and rises up. Why? Because they are less dense when they are being heated up so when the, when when do we mean uh what do we mean by this less dense property of gases as they are being heated up they are lighter okay so when that happens um they rises up further from their original position on the lower troposphere it carries with it this rising gases as they are being heated up by the ground, they rise and as they rise, they carry with it moisture resulting in a low pressure system essential for a tropical cyclone to form. So all of the uh, moisture, since they evaporated, um, they carry 
the water vapor or the moisture on the surrounding area as they rises up. Now with this, as to this effect or as to this process, the effect is that they form a low pressure area as they rises up on that particular location. Consequently, clouds are formed as moisture, as they start collecting moisture, it condenses. Remember my discussion last time? Um, as you go up the troposphere level only, as you go up the troposphere, the temperature drops or it cools down. Why? The particles are less um, and sparse. They are actually spread apart, which means um, the heat that is actually coming from the sun is distributed and likewise spread out. So which means on this highest portion of the troposphere, it is cold because the uh, heat that is captured is actually spread. Okay? So which means that particular location or on the highest portion of the troposphere, it is cold. Now, when the time comes when those heated air rises up and reaches this cold portion of the troposphere, what happens is that they condenses. Okay? This warm air that rises up to the troposphere level or to the cold temperature um, level of the troposphere, they condenses or cool down. And to that effect, when they are gathered up, or they form into a um, collection of moisture into that particular location, they form clouds. Okay? So they form clouds. Thus, um, among the layers of the atmosphere, the troposphere is the site of weather and climate phenomena, such as um, tropical cyclone formation. So when these clouds are heavy enough, uh, they drop down in the form of rainfall. Now let's proceed to our main topic. What is a tropical cyclone? The word tropical cyclone is composed of two distinct words that completely describe its characteristics. Tropical refers to its geological starting point, which is usually hot and humid. So such as this one, Philippines is located on a tropical climate. Whereas cyclone is a meteorological term that refers to its cyclonic circulation, uh, where the strong winds in the northern hemisphere circulate counterclockwise, whereas on the southern hemisphere it rotates clockwise. Tropical cyclones have different names um, depending upon its origin. It is called hurricane if it is formed on the North Atlantic Ocean, affecting most of the Caribbean. Typhoon if it is formed on the Northwest Pacific Ocean, affecting here in the Philippines and likewise mostly of the Japan. Severe tropical cyclone is the term used if it originates in the Southeastern Indian and Southwest Pacific Ocean. Severe cyclonic storm in the northern uh, Indian Ocean. Tropical cyclone if it forms from the southwest Indian Ocean. And in the Philippines, it is termed as typhoon. Okay? Now, let's proceed on how a tropical cyclone develops. There are three major stages uh, uh, needed for this type uh, tropical cyclone formation. The first one is a formative stage. The second one is a mature stage. And then the last one is the dissipation stage. Formative stage pertains to the state in which a tropical cyclone begins to develop when the conditions needed for its formation are met. Later, we will discuss what are these conditions. When a tropical cyclone already packed with raging winds and swirling towering clouds, it is actually in mature stage. Dissipation stage when it is weak and can disappear anytime with lack of 
moisture. So, which means the desiccation stage is the stage wherein it lacks moisture, uh, no water, or less water is falling down from this um, cyclone. Okay? A, a tropical cyclone starts to form when the following conditions are met. So, these are the following conditions. So, there must be, number one, a tropical ocean. So, what do we mean by tropical ocean? It should be what? Warm, number one. Now, because the condition in a tropical area, it should be humid, warm, and then hot. To be specific, the, temp the temperature should be 26 to 30 degree Celsius. Okay? And likewise, the oceans here are actually large. So, which means, um, if there will be a lot of moisture that will be collected from this tropical ocean, which means a lot of moisture will form on the low pressure area zone. And if that happens, huge um, tropical cyclones or typhoon will form if a lot of moisture is supplied on that low pressure area. Next, um... In addition, the surface temperature of this ocean temp uh, typically ranges from 26 to 30 degrees Celsius. Nevertheless, if this is not met or lower than 26 degrees Celsius, which means tropical cyclone will not form. Okay, because that is enough, 26 to 30 is enough to warm um, the sea surface and evaporate uh, some of its uh, water on the surface only. Next, converge of low altitude winds. What do you mean by converge? Which uh, converge means um, collision or what do you call that? Converge um, coming together of different winds from different regions. As warm air develops on the ocean surface only, it expands. Again, may I reiterate on that? It expands expands and rises because it is less dense now when gas is being heated up they expand and rises up okay leading to the formation of a low pressure area on that particular area wherein it is being heated up or the ocean is being heated up which means if this is the ocean where it receives um, heat coming from the sun ranging from 26 to 30 degrees Celsius, it heats up those gases on top of it. Um, and then when that happens, if they heat up these gases, these gases expands and then rises up, leading to the formation of low pressure zone. The surrounding low altitude winds or trade winds Converge then replace the warm air, which likewise rises to the out the atmosphere. So which means the gases from the trade winds or these areas, which are, are actually um, carrying a lot of gases, replaces replaces the area which is actually being left by those gases that rises up. So, which means there is now movement. So, those particles are coming from the high pressure zone going to the low pressure zone or the air which is being left by the gases that rises up. As such, as such, it carries with it the moisture from the water that evaporated from the warm ocean. So, which means as they go up or as they rise up, it carries all the moisture from the surrounding or from the water that evaporated from the warm ocean. Now, if that happens, as the warm air expands to the atmosphere, it goes up. And then when it reaches that cold area from the troposphere, it condenses. It cools down and forms clouds. This change in temperature allows moisture to condense, like what I've said a while ago, thereby forming droplets of water. And in the end of that, they form clouds. These clouds settle at about 
10 kilometers in the atmosphere or 10 kilometers from the ground. Next is actually Latin heat of condensation. So what is that? As the condensation of water continues or as more gases rises up and then it condenses because they meet the cold temperature on that region of the troposphere, the latent heat energy stored in it is released. So, which means the heat energy as they cool down is released to the environment. This provides the clouds with more power, creating a self-sustaining heat cycle. So, which means as more gases rises up, more gases condenses, more, uh, as more gases condenses, more heat is released to the environment. So that heat, as we do know, heat is actually a form of energy. And energy, as we do know, it enables an object to move. Okay? So as a result, the clouds thicken and become heavy and it continues to grow towering at about 12 to 15 kilometers high in the troposphere. Next, condition. Coriolis effect. The Coriolis force or the force render, rendered by Earth's rotation due to its tilted axis affects wind movement. So when do we, what do we mean by Coriolis effect? That is actually the bending of wind. Instead of warm air rises directly to the North Pole, that will not happen because since the earth is rotating counterclockwise on the north, it will bend. The wind bends. Okay? So, the wind will not go directly or straight or 90 degrees. Rather, they will bend. That is actually Coriolis effect, which is actually due to the earth's rotation. Thus, Coriolis affects the rising air from the surface to spiral around the center of the thick clouds forming a vortex so which means it helps this Coriolis effect helps the towering clouds so if if um remember on the latent heat of condensation as more gases con uh, rises up more gases will condense more latent heat is released to the environment and it forms uh towering clouds now, what's the next thing? You need to move the towering clouds for it to form in a tropical cyclone. So, what factor highly affects that movement? The Coriolis effect. Now, when when the Coriolis effect uh, effect um, move these towering clouds, then your cyclone totally has a movement now. Now, uh, it moves counterclockwise on the northern hemisphere, whereas this towering clouds, um, which forms on the southern hemisphere, moves clockwise. Okay, so the eye is actually an air of calm air, sometimes windless, that is surrounded with a vertical wall of thick clouds that produce intense wind and heavy rain. So, which means you have now a towering cloud. With movement, now due to due to Coriolis effect, with an eye on the center, which means you have a tropical cyclone, which is actually on a mature stage. Why? Because the cyclone is actually has a towering clouds. It has a movement due to Coriolis effect, and then last but not the least, it forms a cloud, uh, an eye rather. I'm sorry. So when this three. When these three characteristics or properties are present on the towering cloud, which means there is a tropical cyclone formed already. Next, if warm water is now constantly available and there is no wind system, a tropical cyclone will not form. Because you need uh, the, the, the cyclone needs to move from one place to another. Because if that towering clouds will not move, then it will just drop all the moisture um, that it collected from the warm sea surface on the same position, which means you have, you, you there is no tropical cyclone forms because we do know that this typhoon, storms, hurricane move from one place to 
another. Okay? So, this is the reason why tropical cyclones usually weaken or undergo dissipation stage. So, when they are on land and could sometimes strengthen again when they reach the ocean. Because when they are on land, they will release their um, moisture. That is actually automatic because they're on land, there are no moisture to be collected or less moisture to be collected on land. Uh, but when they reach the ocean, they strengthen again or they become powerful again, these tropical cyclones, which I am referring into, because again, they can collect moisture. As more moisture, remember this, are mo as more moisture rises up and condenses and releases their latent heat, thus, this latent heat powers again the typhoon which me, or the tropical cyclone, which means the tropical cyclones powers up again. But when there is less moisture to be collected or no moisture to be collected again, then the dissipation stage is uh, the next stage uh, to be processed by a tropical cyclone. Thus, a constant supply of warm water provides a sufficient amount of energy or the latent heat to increase its wind speed and rotation. The warmer the sea surface temperature is, and the warmer and moister the air is, the stronger the tropical cyclone will be. How do land masses and bodies of water affect typhoons? So, like what I've mentioned a while ago, land masses and bodies of water highly affects typhoon. We have said the tropical cyclone form, develop, and intensify if the basic conditions such as constant supply of warm water from the tropical ocean, moist air, and wind system converge exist. If one of the needed con the condition deteriorates, tropical cyclones will not form. Land masses and tropical cyclones affect the cyclone itself. A tropical cyclone weakens during and after its landfall. Again, because in land masses, there are no moisture, there are no water to be collected on that area. Thus, the moisture from the towering clouds or from the tropical cyclones falls down in the form of rainfall. Okay? The moment a tropical cyclone passes a landmass, it is affected by various um, factors such as forest, mountain ranges, and then the top topography. Because this, the trees, the mountains, scrapes off. Remember, the height of tropical cyclone ranges only from 10 to 15 kilometers by height. So we have also mountains which is actually having a height of 10 kilometers, 9 kilometers, um, 6 kilometers, sometimes 11, sometimes 12, which means they could scrape off the moisture content. Remember, soil soil absorbs the heat, the, the water, are good absorbers of water. Likewise, trees, the roots of trees and other plants absorbs water. So which means when they when when the tropical cyclone strikes a mountain, the mountain or the soil scrapes off the mount the, the water uh, content of the tropical cyclone. Because uh, the level formation or the height of the uh, formed tropical cyclone is up to a height of 10 to 15 kilometers, which is actually the same height with most of the mountain ranges in some land masses that we have here on earth which is good why because the mere fact that we have mountain ranges tall trees serves as a protection for us humans for this um massive and damaging tropical cyclones okay however the lack of warm, moist air as its energy source can severely weaken the tropical cyclone. The presence of mountains can actually reduce the strength of tropical cyclones by as much as 50%. Okay, because they can get 
they can absorb, they can scrape off the water content of the tropical cyclones. Tropical cyclones likewise weaken due to increased surface friction. The more that they stay on land masses, the more that they could not collect moisture, the greater tendency for that um, tropical cyclone to dissipate or to die out. Okay? Ha, next, oceans or colder climate regions. Due to Earth's rotation, tropical cyclones are pushed by high altitude winds to move north. Because since the Earth is actually rotating, um, the gases from the tropical cyclone or from this area which is hot can go to higher altitude or on colder region due to the rotation of the Earth. So, as they reach mid-altitude zones or the middle latitude, you have the tropical cyclone, middle latitude, and then you have the polar regions. Okay, so same with the southern hemisphere, tropical, middle latitude, and then the polar, south polar region. They are driven by strong high-altitude westerly winds to move toward the northeast where they completely dissipate or die out due to colder climate regions where oceans are likewise cold, which means if number one condition which is actually tropical ocean, which is warm ocean, which is badly needed for this tropical cyclone formation is not met, uh, there will be no tropical cyclone formation. Thus, on the middle latitude and um, polar region, um, expected that they will have less or none at all typhoon or tropical cyclone formation. Because on those regions, since it is cold, automatically the tropical cyclone dissipates or die out. Next, cold oceans are likewise cold, so which means there is no, uh, there will be no moisture to be collected on that area. Colder ocean surface contains little percentage of warm moist air, weakens a tropical cyclone, and contribute to its death. Okay? So, when it gets colder or when the tropical cyclone is being pushed on the higher altitude, specifically on the middle latitude and on polar region, automatically it dissipates. Okay? Or it is actually getting near to its death stage. Now, on the last part, Pag-asa here in the Philippines classifies tropical cyclones that enters our Philippine area of responsibility. Don't worry, I will have a separate discussion on that. Uh, number one classification is tropical depression. These are actually cyclones which enters our Philippine area of responsibility having a wind speed of 61 km per hour. Tropical storm, if it has wind speed of 62 to 88 km per hour. Severe tropical storm, if it has wind speed of 89 to 117 km per hour. Typhoon, which is actually having a wind speed of 118 to 220 km per hour. That is very common here in the Philippines because we are surrounded with huge bodies of water, so which means as the cyclone enters our um, Philippine area of responsibility, they collect much water and with that, as they collect much water, a lot of heat energy is released uh, to the towering cloud making the tropical cyclone intensified okay? or more powerful because as they as they pass through these bodies of water, they can collect a lot of moisture. That powers the cyclone. And last but not the least, which is the category of the most devastating typhoon which hits the Philippines, is the super typhoon, which has a wind speed of 220 kilometers and above. Okay? So... That's all for today. If you have any question, you can message me through our Google Hangouts. And I hope